so this is 11 if i counted correctly <laughs> What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to yet another standard gameplay video. It's actually been a while since I have recorded. It's been a busy few days uh, and we'll talk about that as we go through. But I just want to remind you, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It does help us out. But not only that, you are entered to win a free draft booster box of Streets of New Campena when that comes out. I know spoiler season hasn't officially started yet, but we're getting close, guys. So I wanted to make sure we gave you guys as much time as possible for this one. Subscribing is only one way to enter. There are three other free ways you can do so and then a couple of bonus entries all that information over on our landing page in the video as well as on our uh, website it resolves mtg.com so please do check all that out but in the meantime guys let's talk about today's deck we have got is it delver here today with a few upgrades from kamigawa uh which i think really really helped this deck a lot uh so to talk about some of the new cards first obviously before I guess I should do that. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know how a Delver deck works, essentially it's a low land, uh, very instant speed style deck. So the goal of the deck is to run a lot of cheap spells, a lot of instants and sorceries that you can use to flip your Delver of Secrets into a 3-2 flyer relatively reliably. Um, now in standard, this tends to be a little bit more, you know, tricky, of course, because the, the card pool is quite limited. However, we do have a lot of pieces that help make that work. And some of those tried and true classics are here. We've got the Fading Hope, the Considers, the Spell Pierces. We've got a couple play with fire, uh, just as a little bit of like added removal against what I have found at least, uh, the Naturalist decks like Jakura Na Naturalist. Things like that, are, it, it really helps to have a play with fire, just in case. Uh, maybe you're up against a white weenie deck as well. Just dealing with some of those cards is very important. Spike Field Hazard does a very similar role, but again, does help flip Delver. Uh, Expressive Iteration's been in standard for a while and is great. Jawari Disruption, running the full four, mostly for the land slot as well. Uh, when I say we run very few lands, 15 are what we have dedicated land drops. Now, what that also does not include, though, we've got two Seagates, two, uh, four Jwari Disruption, and then two Spike Field Hazards. So there really are a lot more lands in the list uh, that we have access to. But the new cards from Kamigawa that really helped this deck out quite a bit, in my opinion. So first and foremost, one of the all-stars, I think, in just in general uh, from the set uh, is, of course, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. This spits out a 2-2 that does create treasure tokens for us. And again, lands are a little bit sparse. And so having that treasure uh, creator really does help us out, allowing ourselves to draw a couple extra cards as well on that second uh, counter. Because of things like Bloodthirsty Adversary, it's actually okay if we discard some cards because, again, we get to replay them. Uh, and then finally getting a 2-2 on the reverse side that you can use to copy your Delver of Secrets isn't too bad. You can get in for a good bit of damage that way. Uh, another new card, uh, I believe the only new card aside from lands is Seismic Wave. And again, this is a nice one uh, against the Naturalist decks. It's crazy. Um, the reason being, they've got the little, you know, companion, the little 1-1 one -one companion. They've got the, uh, the little green guy um, <laughs> that only starts at 1-1. One, uh, at one -one. And so the idea is that we can deal two damage to the naturalist or to one of the creatures and then hopefully take care of at least one or two others with the seismic wave uh, at instant speed as well. So we can do this in response to an enchantment play or something like that. And again, instant speed spells are very important for the list. Uh, we do have an overcharged amalgam. Kind of sitting at the top end here, the idea is we can obviously exploit this to counter something. It's just a hard counter on a stick, uh, which is pretty phenomenal. Uh, and then, of course, uh, bolstering up that Bloodthirsty Adversary with the 1-1 one -one counters is quite good. Suspicious Stowaway going to help us draw some cards, hopefully. Uh, the Spectral Adversary going to hopefully protect uh, some of our stuff. Um, in general, I think this is a, a really good card for the deck. Malevolent Hermit, also a great way to counter some non-creature spells. Uh, in general. So lots of interesting stuff with this one, guys. I think this is going to be a pretty interesting one. Oh, one card I did forget to mention, March of Swirling Mist, only a one of here, does help phase things out. So again, 
it's just a way to uh protect the delvers protect the adversaries whatever we need to protect we can protect uh we do have the soaring city here the hall of the storm giants and the den of the bugbear in the uh land slot to really help us out as well so gonna be an interesting one guys again uh it's been a long weekend it's been a couple of days since i've been able to record we're gonna talk about all that as we get into game one but we'll go ahead and jump in first uh and hopefully we'll get some wins with this i'm kind of excited it's been a while since we've tested delver let's jump right in right now all right guys here we are for game number one now this is an interesting hand does not have the turn one delver however we do have quite a number of interesting things that we can use here i'm gonna try and keep we'll see how it goes um but guys yeah so as i mentioned it has been a long weekend wow there we go um what uh hmm. so i think we do this and then fading hope potentially right like that seems probably like the best option um Do we bounce one? I think not yet. I think we wait. So if they cast an enchantment here, that's going to be annoying. Um, yeah, so let's see where they target this. So that one's going to go there. Where's this one going to go? They're going to double up. Perfect. Okay, so now we can go ahead and bounce this. Just get it out of there, and then it's not really a problem. Um, hmm. Do I want to keep Delver? I think I do. Uh, at some point, we're going to need it, so I feel like that's probably pretty useful. Uh, and then here, we can just do this. We have the Jwari Disruption up, which I think is probably the right play. We'll see what they actually end up casting here. I have no clue what they could have. Against these Naturalist decks, though, again, these these things kind of feel nice. Uh, oh, I forgot. This, uh, this makes things cost one more. Um, that's okay, though. Let's see, it looks like they're just gonna get for an attack. So this is actually okay with me. Uh, the reason being, we've got that seismic wave again. This is gonna deal with everything pretty cleanly here. Uh, we are a bit on the slower game plan right now, but it's kind of okay. We get a nice little two for one there with that seismic wave. Again, the, the paladin class did kind of mess us up a little bit there, but that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Um, again, guys, so a long weekend. I know I get sidetracked pretty quickly. Um, the reason it has been kind of a struggle, uh, and I'm being as open and candid as possible with you guys, because I do think it's fair for, you know, you guys should know what's going on, uh, within reason. Um, I have, let's see, I think we just want this, weirdly. Let's throw a spell pierce on the bottom and we'll take the land. Uh, so we can go ahead and play that. Uh, I think we just play Delver and probably just go ahead and consider now just to set things up uh yeah actually i will take a fading hope so some some stuff has been going on in my family uh that has been a little bit trying for the entire family uh and what i mean by that so for those of you who don't know um and i i never really talk about this so there's really no reason why you should but my grandparents um are well into their 90s very near 100 years old uh, which is phenomenal, and we're very lucky to have had them around this long, and it's pretty awesome. But, uh, unfortunately, what is happening is my granddad, uh, is going downhill a little bit. And what I mean by that is just that his eyesight's not great, there are certain things that are making things a little difficult for him, uh, and so we're having to deal with that. And that's fine, that's not a problem, we can do that, but, uh, it is causing a lot of a lot of us are having to go over and help out quite a bit uh with you know lifting him up if he falls that kind of thing and so it's been taking up um as it should uh, a good bit of time and it's uh it's unfortunately of course something that has to get done uh more so than videos for you guys as much as i would love to get videos for you guys out so i'm doing the best i can to not let it bother the channel uh and so far it has not um, but I do want to just encourage everybody to be be aware that if I happen to miss a day or if a video comes out late for a day, that's why. Uh, it has nothing to do with me like trying to avoid or not being able to or whatever. So just some things to keep in mind, guys. I, uh, I do appreciate everybody's understanding there because I know it's frustrating for sure, but it is what it is. I just kind of have to do that. Um... I'm gonna say no attacks because I think we're gonna end up having to do some stuff here. Uh, so unfortunately, that's just the reality of what's going on. Uh, it has been taking up quite a bit of time. So again, I do appreciate everybody being 
uh, very... Uh, I'm gonna do this. Exploiting this. Uh, I do appreciate everybody being patient and understanding about everything, because it is a lot, uh, but it, it is something that just kind of has to happen. So, again, I appreciate it, guys. It really does mean a lot. All right. Um... I think we double block. So they can only kill one of these. Um, we might actually Fading Hope. Can we? No, it's got to be a creature. I was going to say we could Fading Hope on something. Okay. Interesting. Um, so we can disturb this back out. Just trying to look at options, guys. This is a, a tricky deck to play sometimes. It is something that you do have to be pretty uh, conscious of the decision makings, the, the stuff that you're deciding to do each turn. So let's throw this out. Um, I think we attack in. I actually think we leave up the Fading Hope. So if they throw that fate, the uh, Katilda onto the Kami, like if they get a land and throw that out, um, we can Fading Hope it and basically completely absolve that Katilda from being able to do anything, which would be kind of sick. Um, alternatively, we could just do it preemptively before they attack. I mean, we've got some options here. They just have another Katilda. Well, that's pretty good. Okay. I assume they're going to attack here. So I do think we bounce it here. They're stuck on lands, it seems. So that's kind of good for us. Uh, Yeah, actually, I think we do take that. All right. So we've got a long way to go to really be able to deal with what they've got going on here. Um, I think we have to bloodthirsty adversary. And we can use it on the seismic wave to actually kill the Katilda. Um, so we'll auto pay. We'll seismic wave. So the way that this works, I believe, is it deals two damage here and then one damage again. Uh, and so it does actually kill it, which is quite helpful. Um, we get a pretty good attack in here as well. I mean, it's not... We're not stable by any means, but I do think that this is uh, kind of a step in the right direction. I do think that was probably the best play we could have had. My hope is they don't have a land here. Because um, while the combi of transients is frustrating and scary, <laughs> um, we're playing out a good bit of power here, which is nice. Okay. Um, so we can drop this. Uh, I think first things first. I think we just get the attack in. Uh, they could block with the Weaver, but I really doubt they do. That's just such a good card. There's no reason for them to. So here what we can do is play the Fable, leave up the Dwari Disruption uh, to disrupt. So if they happen to draw a land here, again, we can disrupt the five drop, which hopefully is just a Katilda or something along those lines. Um, even if it isn't and it's just another four drop, we can still... Ooh. Okay. Interesting. All right, so let's see what they target first. Because we can actually phase things out here. Um, let's make sure we're in full control. So they get to select another copy here. All right, so we want X to equal two. Um, which two did they, this and this? Um, yeah, so then that resolves. So neither of those are gonna get hit with the borrowed time and we're actually just gonna get them back. All right, cool. That was really good. Um, let's see, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's enough to kill then. Submit zero. So we attack in. This hits anything. So this is 11, if I counted correctly. 
All right, that was a really clean game, actually. Uh, that was actually a tricky one, though. It was pretty close. They had a lot of powerful stuff. I think we played relatively well, though, and obviously we got the win. That was awesome. Let's jump into a game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Now, this is a bit of a tricky hand, solely because we don't have red mana available. However, we do have a turn one Delver with Fading Hope and the Hermit. Because of that, I'm going to try this. Um, I'm not super optimistic, of course, but we did, uh, from the base list that we actually found, I did a lot of tweaking with this list, uh, and part of that was to include a couple of extra red sources because in testing, I was finding that we really didn't have enough. Uh, and so it is nice to have a couple of extra ones here. Hopefully we can draw them. But again, you have to keep in mind a lot of our mana are tapped sources. If you look at uh, the Dwari Disruptions and the uh, uh, Spike Field Hazard, like, those will be tapped lands regardless of what we do. And so it's just something to think about interesting they really really mulliganed uh they went down to five that is a that's a scary place to be uh five mana is not a great place but we can draw a red mana here okay uh i'll take that uh kind of silly because now they know of course that we have a Dwari disruption um but i do think we leave it open here given their lack of options uh i think we should probably just you know make it a little bit challenging for them um i'm gonna slow him down here a little bit uh and we will throw that back again this gets us a scry as well which is helpful um that's less helpful <laughs> um well i do think we attack in so let's go ahead and do that um I'm gonna play the Hermit, and we are kind of opening up. Oh, I should have played this as a land too. That was a mistake. We are kind of opening up the possibility for Righteous Valkyrie here, but they were gonna be able to play it anyway, even if we left up the Jwari Disruption. So I don't think it's really gonna matter, you know? Um, this is very scary though. Obviously they're gonna start getting in for quite a bit of damage. Um, wow, okay. Yeah, 100%. Um, they're gonna exile the Fading Hope from the graveyard. Okay. Sure. Um, I think we take the three. I don't think we block yet. So again, this was a bit of a mistake. We definitely should have played that out last turn, in my opinion. Um, and unfortunately, I think we're in a position of passing because these Cleric of Life's Blood are... These are things that we just can't we can't do too much about um and it's a pretty scary place to be but we are gonna have to kind of kind of do some not fun blocks here i think is uh <laughs> the way this is gonna end up going we do get to flash this in which is quite nice so let's go ahead and do that uh on the bright side they also don't have any cards in hand so we do get to kill one of these here um unfortunately it is a two for one but I don't think we have a choice. If we get... See, we just need... Really need a, uh, a land here. Okay, so what can we do? We can play the Hermit. Uh, or, excuse me, the Geist. And just have, you know, another double block available to us. Sadly, I think that's probably the play. Um, yeah, I think we just have to do it. It's the more mana efficient play as well. I mean, you have to think when we do draw a red source, we've got quite a lot of options available for us uh, and doubling up on like a play with fire plus a fading hope or a seismic wave and a fading hope, you know, all of those things are options for us. Now, this is going to get a counter on it. But again, we do actually still have the power to block it, which is helpful. That's why it looks like they're not going to go for it. Um, all right, so we throw that down. And unfortunately, we just have to pass. Not a lot we can do. Um, without the mana, I mean, it's just one of those things we can't do too much about. That's scary. That is so scary. Um, okay. So we can waste the trigger here if we would like. Which I think we will. Um... That allows us to see an extra card, so I do think we go for that. So let's go ahead and consider here not a card we want. Also not a card we want. Um, yeah. 
This is where it feels bad to have Delver, guys. This is the downfall of a deck like this when you just don't have very many lands. I mean, you know, what are you going to do? You can't draw... If you can't draw lands, you can't play the game. And so, unfortunately, this is just a side effect of the Delver deck. Uh, I would also recommend what we're demonstrating here is that there are a lot of other aggressive decks out here. The, the benefit to, to a Delver deck on the flip side is that it generally is a fairly aggressive threat. Uh, it can get in relatively quickly. Ideally, it can control the game. Uh, but I think we're seeing, especially against these life gain decks as we're demonstrating here, it's not that easy. Uh, and unfortunately, it's one of those things that they just have more powerful plays than us, and they're still able to double up. I mean, you have to think, this was a mull to five. A mulligan to five, and this is what they're able to pull off at there's not much you can do about that. Uh, and unfortunately, there's not a draw in our deck at this point that could actually save us from a giant 9-9-10-10, whatever. There's that red land. <laughs> um, but again, just too little too late for us here. I think we're going to go ahead and concede, guys. Not just didn't, didn't even have a chance on that one. If we had had red mana, maybe, but we just didn't get it. Let's jump into a game three, though. We got a little bit of time left. Let's see if we can get another win. All right, guys, here we are for game number three, and I think we can try and keep this hand. We've got a little bit of interaction in the early turns here between Spike Field Hazard and Fading Hope, and then we, of course, have that Suspicious Stowaway as well, uh, which is a great turn to play. I know it's not a turn one Delver, but we can, can certainly do our best to make this work. I think we're going to lead on the mountain here. I would like to leave up that Spike Field Hazard because... You know, if they happen to have like a shambling gas or something like that, I'd like to be able to kill it before they can get the minus one, minus one on our stowaway. Uh, so hopefully we can kind of protect that in that case, but we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. Let's go ahead and do that and pass. Here we go. Okay. Uh, probably nothing then from the opponent. All right, that's fine. Uh, so let's do this and let's go ahead and stowaway here. Let's be mana efficient. Not super worried about uh, what they might have. It could be like a circle of confinement, which would be annoying. Um, but it looks like it's just a Luminar Gasper, which is fine by me. Okay, um, so we do have some options here. I think first things first, though, we definitely just attack in. Remember, this can't be blocked, uh, which is great, because we can just do things like this. Um, I think we'll throw a Consider back. You know, I actually think the play is going to be to leave up the Seismic Wave. Um, that transforms the, the Seafaring Werewolf, but it also, in response to them placing a counter on something, we can then Seismic Wave, um, which is kind of the hope here. See, like, this is really good, um, because what we're able to do is this, and then just sweep their, their two creatures here. <laughs> Uh, which feels really good. I'm not going to lie. I really enjoyed that. Um, all right, let's throw this out there. Let's get the attack in first. Uh, it's going to allow us to draw a card, which is great. Let's go ahead and play the Delver. And I think we just pass. Pretty straightforward here. Uh, hopefully what we can do is Spike Field Hazard or Fading Hope. That Fading Hope can help us find an instant or sorcery off the top of the deck, which is great. This is going to be perfect. <laughs> Uh, so what we can do is go ahead and spike field hazard that, get it out of there. Um, this is going to drop down, but I think we do fading hope it. Uh, again, this allows us to scry, and there we go, guys. We got the win. That was beautiful. Absolutely what we wanted. Let's talk about this deck for just a second. All right, guys, so is it Delver? What do we think? I actually think it got significantly better uh, with the additions from Kamigawa. I think there are a lot of things that really helped this deck out. We didn't get to see a lot of that this time around, but the reflection of Kiki Jiki or the Mirror Breaker or whatever, such a good card for this list. I mean, yeah, it's top end is at three, so it's like right there where we need it to be, but like Man, is it a, a prime card for the list? It just does everything you want it to. Uh, I think including so many of the modular flip lands is so important for this because, again, you want a very low land count when you really don't have that high mana cost uh, in terms of spells. You're really looking at mostly one and two drops with a couple above that. Uh, and so I do like the deck. Something to think about, though. Um, first and foremost, 
it's very easy to lose out to things like shambling gas which we do see quite a bit of in the format right now additionally it's very difficult to deal with things that are overly aggressive in comparison to delver which is already a relatively aggressive deck uh, and so you do have to deal with, uh, you know, the life gain decks, things like that, that are going to get out of hand, going to cause you issues. Um, there are, I, I actually think this deck in general is actually pretty good against sweepers. It's not perfect, don't get me wrong, but a defensive uh, fading hope where you bounce your own creature back works great. Uh, you do have the opportunity to phase stuff out, as we saw. There's a lot of interesting tech with this list. And so I'm actually pretty happy with it. Um, I don't think it's a tier one list by no means, but uh, it is kind of fun to see Delver working in standard, at least on some capacity. It's not great, but it does work pretty well. Uh, again, two out of three, not too bad. So I'm happy with it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. It's been really fun. I really love standard Delver, so it's great to see that back. Uh, again, guys, as I mentioned at the top of the video, if things get a little bit tricky and I'm not able to get videos up every single day, I do apologize, but I'm doing the best I can to avoid having that issue. I want to make sure that we've got content coming out for you guys. So I do appreciate everybody's patience and understanding there, but uh, I love you all. You guys are amazing. We'll talk more on the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you then.